Hi, I'm John Harrop. I'm an analyst with the market research company ID TechX. I'm specializing in 3D printing. This is an example of uh, one of the slides I've been working on lately. So we've got some market research information here being visualized and we're using machine learning algorithms to dive into it and try to improve the way we can view the data and information we can squeeze out of it. And this is my... So it says SLA, jet, sand, yeah, that's what right. is that? I can go into detail. So these are different printing processes and here along the bottom we've got the price on a log scale and up the top we've got the speed of the printer on a log scale and so you can see immediately that you can get cheap uh, low speed printers so for example thermoplastic extrusion and then you've got stereolithography we've got jetting technologies and SLS is the best plastic style printer at the moment and then up here you can see we've got metal printers so if you want a metal printer there's no such thing as a cheap one at the moment but you can immediately see all of the all of this, how it breaks down on the graph, and obviously it helps you to identify any unmet needs in the market so you, by looking at these graphics. Are you 3D printer experts? Yeah, yeah, we've been doing yeah. it. I've been looking at 3D printing for years now. I've got my own 3D printers at home. I've been building them and stripping them down and rebuilding them, writing all the software from scratch and just generally having fun. But I also enjoy following all of the markets around 3D printing. So there's lots of attention with 3D printers at every conference. Why are people interested in 3D printing? So it's revolutionizing the way that we manufacture many different goods. It's uh, been used for prototyping primarily for the past 20, almost 30 years. And now it's, there's been a shift and uh, aerospace, for example, have started manufacturing critical, flight critical production components that are going to be flying around in commercial airliners in two years. Uh, and they're printing those directly in metal. It's not yet in the airplanes. They're printing them now, they're building them now, and they're going to be going into the airplanes that are being produced next year and they should be flying the year after. So, so who are you? Oh, um, I'm Rachel Gordon. I'm also a technology analyst at ID Tech X. I also specialize in 3D printing. Um, because of my background, I tend to focus more on the materials side. So following kind of the chemical suppliers through to the materials formulators, and then um, what sort of technologies the materials are appropriate with, and who uses which materials and what they can be used for, the markets surrounding that. So which exhibitors are gonna be here? For the this time we have Airwolf, who are a company from Los Angeles. We're very pleased to have them. They're doing a lot of interesting work producing uh, cheaper printers, but they can use high-end materials. They have a high temperature thermoplastic extrusion print head, more than all of their competitors, pretty much. And they're based down in Los Angeles. Uh, we also have 3D Ponics coming from Ottawa in Canada, who are demonstrating an interesting application of 3D printing. They're actually print 3D printing hydroponics to grow plants and a variety of other companies coming along as well. We've got uh, Boeing lecturing and Bosch lecturing on the work that they're doing. Boeing are obviously a major end user. Aerospace have been driving 3D printing for years now. And uh, Bosch have a, a subsidiary called Dremel, who are quite famous uh, among power tool people. Anybody who's got these Dremel rotary tool at home should know this. Uh, they've just released this year their first 3D printer. So they're doing selling 3D printers. It's a rebranded Flashforge from China and they're providing great support with that. It's getting extremely good reviews in the marketplace. So I'll be interested to meet the guys from Bosch and Boeing here. So in the last uh, couple of years, there's uh, more and more on the Kickstarters, you know, like uh, 3D printer and projects, getting the price down. Yeah. But it's, 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 it's not going to just stay at making uh, prototyping, right? It's going to get to the next level? Yeah, the, yeah. the cheap printers are... Sorry, Rachel. The no cheap problem. printers <laughs> are... Uh, uh, great for prototyping still. They're, they're readily available at the moment. Lots more coming on Kickstarter all the time. 29 new projects this year on Kickstarter. The total funding raised on Kickstarter just for 3D printer projects is now almost $20 million. And so this thing keeps evolving, but at the same time the high-end equipment for, for aerospace, for example, will cost you the best part of a million dollars still. And uh, Rachel's our expert on materials, so she can tell you about the materials side. Which material? Well, uh, the cheap printers that you talked about um, kind of on Kickstarter, use thermoplastics, um, which is fine for prototyping, making kind of cheap plastic objects that you would use around your house. Um, that's kind of what the hobbyists use, what's used in schools. You can make Legos. Yeah, yeah, you can make Lego. But um, if you wanted to do, if you wanted to build a critical part for aerospace, you're not going to make it out of plastic. You're going to make it out of metal. You're going to need a metal printer. Um, yeah, also in like orthopedics and things like that. That's all metal printing, and so very much depending on the final properties you want for your final product, you have to use a different material and that means you have to use a different 3D printing technology. So what's the thermoplastics? Okay. Um, Is it like you heat it up, it melts or...? Yes, exactly. It's the type of plastic that when you heat it, it melts. 
so you can get your spool of filament and you can melt it, pass it through your printer and print in a kind of liquid state and then let it solidify. Um, so it's just the way the technology works means you need to use a thermoplastic. Is it possible to have uh, 3D printers with many different materials? Um, that is a kind of pretty major unmet need in the market at the moment. There are a, a few printers that are just emerging really where you can jet like maybe a couple of materials, maybe two or three, and so you can then mix them and kind of tailor the properties, maybe have a couple of different plastics in the same object. But um, multi-material on a big scale and being able to print like metals and plastics in the same object is something that we don't really see yet. So when people see a 3D printer immediately, maybe they imagine, oh, we're going to be able to print everything, but it's not quite that yet, right? It's not there yet, but I don't see any reason in the long term, long term being more like 50 years here, that we couldn't get closer to a Star Trek style replicator where you could manufacture very complicated objects. People are increasingly interested in functional materials, for example, so the possibility of printing not just in, for example, metals and plastics as conductors and insulators, but also print semiconductors to try to print sensors or actuators and so on and so forth. So. The sky's the limit, really, but it's very much in the lab for anything except for the simplest mechanical components at the moment. So everybody's going to have a fab at home? You're going to print your ARM processors? I hope so. <laughs> That'd be nice.